Hey everyone, it's Anthony back with another video and today we are doing a whip and chat. Hi, hi. Um, yeah, I uh, finally had some time um, after work um, to sit down and get some diamond painting done. It's been a little bit hectic around the house. Um, but I've got a lot that I wanted to talk about, so I was like, it needs to happen because I'd like to commit to doing one a week, and I think I'm at my week mark either today or tomorrow. So this either needs to um, get filmed and edited and posted today, or at least filmed and then edited and posted tomorrow. So um, today is Thursday, and I believe it's the 26th of May, so coming up to the end of the month. Um, I do have the, um, our AC was installed and we use kind of one of those window unit swamp coolers, so it kind of lets a lot of sound in from the outside, so you may hear sirens and traffic, um, so just keep that in mind. Um, as we as we chat. But yeah, feel free to uh, grab a project that you're you've been working on or if you're just here to hang out and maybe you're doing other stuff and just want to listen in. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, my name's Anthony. If you this is the first video that you've been watching, um, this is my channel Single in Placing and I've been diamond painting for uh, coming up on six months now, five or six months now. Um, six months, yeah, because I think I started in January. Um, so yeah, I, and I'm still beginner, beginner. Um, I think this is my fifth kit that I've ever worked on in total. Um, and it's my, oh my goodness, one, two, three. Yeah, fifth kit ever worked on and fourth square. I've only done one round kit so far. Um, and this is actually, um, as far as what I'm using and what this kit is, this is Soul of the Rose by John William uh, William Waterhouse, and it is from Distracted by Diamonds. You can see some of the Distracted by Diamonds washi tape there. They send, sent that with this kit, and I love it so much, but I've been loving this kit. It's been a blast to work on. Um, when I do have time to sit down and diamond paint, I just really feel like I crank through it because the drills are really nice, and um, the canvas is just really nice to work on. Um, I've just been having a blast. So um, yeah, just kind of single placing some of this stuff, the um, this little detail around the edge here, and then I've been working my way in with each section, but I'm hoping to get through the rest of this section that you see here, as well as this um, today or tonight. Um, I actually took um, tomorrow off, Friday off, um, because I wanted to, you know, extend that holiday Memorial Day weekend, you know, one extra day. And so today is technically my Friday, which is nice. The other reason for that, and, you know, might as well start getting into the news. Um, I might have, you might have seen it on my kidding up of, um, the Red Gate of Hongo. I did a kidding up of that. That's from Uniquely Yours Down Under. But during that kidding up, I uh, announced that, um, I, uh, had got a puppy or I had uh, bought a puppy and needed to pick it up. Um, I believe it was that next day or two days after I posted that. And so he is here. He's sitting right behind me, passed out. Um, we were running around outside. I did some yard work during my lunch break. And so he was just running around outside and it's really hot today. So he's all tuckered out and just kind of hanging out back here. So if you hear some heavy puppy breathing, that's just him just trying to regulate his um, his heat. But um, if he does wake up or comes over to uh, give some loves, I will try to move the camera or I'll just wait till the end of the whip and chat. That way I don't have to try to reposition the camera just right with you guys. So um, you'll also see him again next Tuesday or next week um, during the unboxing. I started that video with a little introduction to him. Um, his name's Apollo. He's 13 weeks this week and or I guess three months, three months in a week. And um, yeah, he's half Siberian Husky, half Alaskan Malamute. So he's a little, little fluff bunny. So yeah, he's hanging out behind me. That's probably really close to be doing that. Um, he's hanging out behind me and we're just having a good time enjoying the, we're gonna enjoy the long weekend, try to do some training, some more training on the leash. Uh, maybe you might even do some more kennel training over the four days. Essentially, I took, um, you know, work from home these four days, Monday through Thursday um, to practice kennel um, training him. So he's gotten up to about two and a half, three hours straight before he's had enough. Um, 
without any potty accidents or anything like that. So we're doing pretty good. I think that's probably the max I'm gonna get out of him until he's probably another month older. Um, so we're gonna work with that for now and just keep bumping that up until we get to a full work day is the main goal because um, I work Monday through Friday, nine to five in office. So um, yeah, that's that. Um, what else is going on? Um, let's just dive into it, I suppose. Um, so the puppy has been a lot. He's, de whoopsies. Um, it's definitely been um, a learning experience for me just in this first week because this is the first time I've ever had a full-time pet. I've done a ton of dog sitting in my day and um, yeah, it just, you know, I really have been wanting a dog for quite some time and have never thought it was the right time. Um, but I have a yard now, which was one of my main reasons for not having a dog as I wanted a yard. And now that I have a yard, I've been considering it a little bit more. And then last week, it was Saturday, last Saturday, um, I was just, you know, that it popped into my head, like, just see what's out there, you know, like see what puppies you might be able to find. And, you know, you're not, I hadn't really like given a, a ton of like in-depth thought in that moment, like set intentions to find, you know, finding a dog that day. I was just kind of more curious than anything else. And I'm scrolling through and, you know, like, oh, this, you know, this dog's really cute. And I really like that breed. And it was more just kind of like, I guess, window shopping, I guess, is the best way to describe it. Just kind of seeing, you know, getting myself like in the mode, you know, and then Apollo popped up or in his uh, breeder um, named him Bolt, but he's he was so young that he's responding to Apollo now just fine. Um, but Apollo popped up and I was just like, oh my goo goo. Like he, he would just like, I don't know. It was, it was love at first sight, I suppose. So, um, my, my, one of my, uh, buddy's girlfriend, uh, my buddy's girlfriend asked me, was that yesterday or the day before after work, we went on a walk and she asked me and she was like, um, what made you pick him? Or, you know, what other dogs did you see? And I was like, honestly, I don't remember. Like, <laughs> like everything else kind of, I just kind of got tunnel vision once I saw his little face. And so anyway, um, so yeah, we went and picked, or I went and picked him up um, this past Saturday. Um, so a week after I saw him, I went and grabbed him. And then, um, yeah, we've just spending, been spending the, the past five days just kind of, he's just been getting acclimated and um, getting, you know, potty trained and he's doing really good with that. He's pretty much already trained to go to the bathroom outside. Um, he just doesn't, he has a hard time signaling, like, I'd like to be let outside. So you just have to be cognizant of letting him out every hour and a half, two hours, just so he can go do his business and then we're good to go. So the only times he's been having accidents are when I was like on back-to-back -back calls or just just plain forgot, you know, lost track of how long it had been, and then we have an issue. But um, he's also really good about holding it through the night. So um, he hasn't had any accidents through the night. So he can go a good six, seven hours without going to the potty. But when he's uh, when it's during the day and he has, you know, room to roam around in the craft room or if I have him with me in the living room, um, he'll he's really good about sneakily just kind of slinking off and then you either catch him in the moment correct it and run him outside or if I see it you know 10-15 minutes later there's nothing I can really do because it's like you can't really you can't really coach on something that he's already completely forgotten about so I have I, I just have to be mindful of how long it's been and I have been a pretty big um you know papa bear and just keeping an eye on him and kind of knowing where he's at at all times. So it really hasn't happened that often. So anyway, um, so yeah, during the evenings, we've just been hanging out here in the office slash craft room. And um, if I can't get diamond painting done, then, or, you know, if I'm not diamond painting, which I haven't been doing a lot of, I'm usually just kind of catching up on work stuff after hours or playing with him or taking him on walks and stuff. Um, he was um he was hadn't been put on a leash um in the time that he was with the the breeder so that was also kind of interesting but he's picking it up so fast like the first day I brought him home I tried to take him down the block it took about half an hour just to get to the end of the block because 
he was just so distracted and also I was new to him too so he's probably confused and you know and I, I was really scared to like pull on the leash at all you know because he's just a little baby and so he kind of led the walk and eventually I just I got a little frustrated I was like okay I think we that was a good try so we, I just picked him up and carried him back to the house um, because it just was so slow going and then I kind of learned after that, like at, um, we had another walk the next day and he was really afraid of other dogs at the, it wasn't a dog park, but there was just a lot of dogs there. Um, <clears throat> he was scared of the dogs, So I just was like, okay, we need to socialize you. We need to get you out walking more in like public spaces where there's a ton of people and a ton of dogs because he, I think he had just been in the breeder's house the whole time. So um, so yeah, even after day five, like yesterday, we went on a pretty long walk, um, up and down Clear Creek Canyon, um, path, which is in Golden, Colorado. And there's a ton of dogs and people running and cyclists and this and that. And at first he was a little bit in sensory overload, but he got acclimated real quick. And before you know it, he's letting everybody pet him and he's licking everybody and, ooh, whoopsie, um, trying to play with dogs and this and that. So I haven't spilt a, a container in a while. Um, so yeah, he is, he's getting it. He's, he's acclimating really well. So I'm super happy for that. I was worried, you know, because he was just kind of a little skittish, a little scared the first couple of days, anytime we did something new. And he still is a, a little bit, you know, he gets surprised by like people that kind of run past us or if there's someone on a bike that's riding past and they kind of sneak up on him, he'll be like, whoa, what's going on? But for the most part, he's doing good now. Um, so yeah, we're just gonna keep working on it and practicing and um, he's incredibly smart, which is makes me really happy because he's picking stuff up so quick. But he's a husky and that make, also makes me scared. <laughs> so um, they're just notorious for being little escape artists and being tricky and sneaky and you just kinda need to make sure that your fence is is strong and high and all that good stuff. So um, I'm just going to continue to keep an eye on him and train him how to, you know, maintain some boundaries. But I know as he gets older, he's going to want to test that. So we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And I just need to remember to be patient, you know, patient and loving. And, you know, he's he's still learning. So anyway, um, so yeah, got the puppy hanging out with him. Other than that, um, you know, work's been busy, but good. And I feel like I'm kind of settling in um, at my job. And if, if you don't know, I work as a recruiter for a telecommunications company. So I do a lot of hiring and sourcing and getting people through the hiring process. That is not a single placer. Um, so it can be quite stressful and it's very fast paced and high energy and high demand. Um, so I've been with that company for about seven months now um yeah seven or eight months and I just now feel like comfortable not comfortable in the sense that it's easy but like I know the ropes I know the steps I'm, I've kind of got a grasp on all the roles that I'm trying to fill right now and I've got an idea of the candidate profiles so things are just kind of clicking into place a little bit better for me I'm feeling less overwhelmed which is really nice so starting to really enjoy work a lot more than I have been in the past couple of months so um, that's really good and they were you know, my boss was gracious enough to let me kind of work from home for a, a few days even though that's typically not our structure just so I can kind of get Apollo comfortable with being in the crate and at the end of the day I mean I'm doing the same thing that I would do if I went to work right I put him in the crate with the little blanket on top and he's got um, a little Kong in there with some food um, to kind of keep him active and his mind active and busy and kind of tire him out while he's in there he's got his little Kong baby that he his little chew baby and he's got a nice blanket in there which I'm hoping discourages him from going potty in there and so I kind of get him in there with a the treat and make it like fun and exciting to go in there. And then when he kind of sits down to start gnawing on his toy, um, then I'll close the gate and he'll sit there for a little bit and chew on the toy and kind of chill out because he's got something to occupy him. But once he's either bored with that or he's gotten the food out of the Kong, you know, after like 20 or 30 minutes, he really like starts crying and it it really tugs on my heartstrings and it hurts so much to just let him sit there and cry it out 
Um, so I usually will come in, t in here into the craft room slash office and work um, with the door closed because I, I do a lot of phone screening. And so I've been having to say all week, I'm so sorry, you know, I'm training our new puppy to be in the kennel. So if you hear any crying, he, you know, it's not a baby. It's not somebody calling for help. It's, well, it is a baby, but it's not a human baby. And it's um, nothing that's crying for uh, human help. It's just a, a puppy that's learning to hang out in his crate. So he'll do that probably for another 30 minutes, off and on, 30 to 45 minutes off and on, just um, just bawling his little eyes out. And oh, it's terrible. I hate sitting here and like, how was it yesterday, the day before? I was just like, is this right? Should I just give in? And like, I was tearing up because I'm like, how dare I get, you know, take this animal away from its parents and then shove it in this freaking cage and then not tend to it. And I was just really spiraling. Um, but then after like, after that, like 40 minutes, he either just tires himself out or he gets bored and he'll just go back to chewing on his toy or he'll fall asleep. And I will leave him in there um, usually for about an hour and 10 hour and 20 minutes is max before he really is like, once he wakes up from that slumber, he is persistent about like, let me out. And that's when he starts to really shake the cage and get more upset because I think he's got his energy back. So, um, so I usually will wait till about an hour and 10, 20 minutes while he's still sleeping and then go let him out, kind of like kind of walk over there softly and gently open the, open the blanket and then gently open the door. So he's kind of coming to as the door is already open. So I'm hoping that like makes it feel like, oh, you totally wanted to be in here and I'm just waking you up, little baby. Like, come on, let's go. Like, you just love it in there so much. I got to take you out, you know? Like, I don't know. <laughs> Maybe that's just me. <laughs> but um, that's kind of how I've been playing it off is like trying to gently wake him up out of that rather than going over while he's in like mid panic, um, trying to get out. Like, I, um, and it seems to be working. I don't have to fight him to go back in there. I usually put his baby in there or a treat and he's good to go. So that's kind of how my days have been going with the training. Um, other than that, I, uh, as far as kits go, as far as diamond painting goes, um, a couple things have happened. So um, if you remember um, my last whip and chat, I believe I was just finishing up or getting pretty close to finishing up uh, Midnight Laundromat by Ivy Dollamore and Diamond Art Club. So I finished that and that is now up at... Um, up in our my office or at our office at work and so everyone really loves that kid and it's just got a lot of attitude and I, a lot of people have said that they just like really resonate with that character whoever it is because it's just like it's fun and it's like a vampire but then also like doing chores <laughs> like it's just an interesting concept and I've just I love everything Ivy Dolamore. I really, really want to get my hands on um, Diamond Art Club did a mystery kit with her. And the mystery kit was like a guy doing like a love spell or something like that. And I guess it just it didn't ring as like amazing with every single person because it is a mystery. So it's hard. You don't really know what you're going to get. And so I did see a couple people on a Facebook group that I belong to, uh, uh, Crafters Anonymous with Miss Coffee. Um, they were trying to um, pass it off. And a couple people actually me messaged me saying, Hey, I've got this kit and it's not my style. Do you want it? And at the time I was just like, I don't need any more kits and I don't need any more kits. But now I'm like, I think I'm going to be a collector of, um, of Ivy Dolomore's, um, kits that she does with Diamond Art Club because I just love them so much. Um, I just picked up, um, I forget what it's called. It's, um, it's like a, an image of a witch and she's in like a greenhouse and um, she's doing like um, using some magic to get the watering can to like water some of the plants. I just picked that up and then a couple of weeks ago I actually got a Fisher Gal which is like um, an image of like a, a cityscape, urban cityscape and it's a, a lady with, uh, with a motorcycle or a moped and then she's got her dog on her back and I actually got that kit before I got Apollo, but Apollo looks a lot like that little pup that's on her back. Um, when I show you, when I move the camera over, I'll show you. Um, so that might even need to be my next unboxing after the one that's going up next week, because I really want to show that one. I, anyway, I just love that artwork. So anyway, finished that uh, kit, hung that up, 
And my goal was to just work on the large custom. I've mentioned it a number of times, um, and I actually did a, a full unboxing of it um, here on the channel. It's a large custom. It was 100 by 120, and it's from Paint with Diamonds. And so my goal, that kit was something I had intended on working on off and on in between other kits for pretty much the whole year. I was originally going to give it as a Christmas gift to my buddy, and then realizing how much of a project it was, I was just like, I'll just give it to him by his next birthday, which is like, I think April. Yeah, it was last month. So it's like April of next year. That gives me like literally a full year to get this kit done. I think I can do that. So I was working on that pretty consistently for a few days because I was done with Midnight Laundromat. And then my roommate was like, that's really cool that you're making that kit for Joe, but it's weird that you're making it because it was of a dirt bike um, that we take up camping. And I was under the strong impression that this was Joe's dirt bike. And so, he, so Jeff was like, it's really weird that you're making, Je uh, making Joe a diamond painting of a dirt bike that's not even his. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he's like, yeah, that's actually one that me and um, our other buddy, um, we bought that together. It was like a co-purchase between me and Alex, but Joe wasn't in on that. Like it's not his dirt bike. And I was like, I had no idea. Like maybe I thought that they had all went in on it together, but I definitely thought Joe either owned it or like was they bought it together because I had shown him the picture that I took of the dirt bike and he was like, oh, wow, like that's so cool. And you got all the detail and stuff. So I don't know, maybe that solidified in my head that it was his bike or partly his dirt bike. So I'm like, you mean to tell me that I, I mean, I had a, not a ton of that kit done, but I had definitely put at least 15, 20 hours into working on that kit at least. And I'm like, and I've been showing not only Joe, but like everybody progress. I'm like, isn't this so cool? And look at the, look at the detail they were able to get with this rendering. And you can only get that with bigger sizes and this and that. I'm like, you mean to tell me this whole time, you guys just let me work on this freaking dirt bike without telling me that like, why would I be doing that in the first place? At least for Joe, right? Um, because it's not his. So I was like, okay, all right. So I am... Um, Next time I saw Joe, um, I was like, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've come to the uh, understanding that the painting that I've been working on for you since February is of a dirt bike that you don't even own. He's like, yeah, I, I didn't, you know, it's a cool picture and all, but I didn't mean, I didn't want to like, like ruin it for you. And I was like, no, no you need to, you should have told me that way. I wasn't working on this freaking thing. Like stressing about getting it, not stressing, but just like setting intentions and goals around creating time to get it done in time for either Christmas or your birthday. Like that would have taken that off of me and I could have picked something else, you know? He's like, oh, it's okay. Like whatever. And I was like, well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give you that, you know? So it is Jeff and Alex's my other, you know, my best friend, Alex, it is their co-dirt bike. And so I live with Jeff. He's my roommate. So I think I'll just work on it at off and on um, when the mood strikes me and we'll hang it up in here. You know, it'll be the, uh, something for our house since it is Jeff's dirt bike. And I really like the photo. So um, we're just going to hold on to it, but I don't have that like drive to work on it. That thing was a like confetti heavy. I feel like every square was a different color. And so I just, I wanted a break from it anyway. So I don't know when I'll come back to it. Probably not for some time. I rolled it up and set it aside. And who knows when I'll get back to it. I, I kitted down the drills and stuff, which was kind of a pain, but it's all done now. Um, but what I can say is I did notice um, what I loved about that canvas is the squares really fit snug and there's like no gapping. And I like that incredibly uniform look until the drills start to kind of pull from the canvas here and there and like pop a little bit. I'm touching this canvas because I'm, that's what I do when I check for popping drills, but I have no issues with this one. Um, that, that with that paint with diamonds one, diamonds one, my intention was going to start to be to seal it after I do each like horizontal row, uh, seal it row by row. And I, I think I was like 
three-fifths of the way to the end of that row before I decided to roll it up. So who knows what that's going to look like when I pull it back out and unroll it. I'm, who knows if half the diamonds will be falling off of it, but I really liked the, the drill quality was very consistent. Shape was consistent. Um, the canvas was extra sticky and the, the drill filled was super easy to read. Um, the only couple things I ran into were some uh, bubbles and rivers around the, some of the edges of the canvas and then the popping drills, which weren't the end of the world. They weren't full on like popping off and completely falling off. They just kind of raise a little bit. So I just had to be mindful to go over it with my roller or whatnot, but it was not as horrible as um, a lot of people make that company out to be. I, I honestly had a, a more enjoyable time working on that than some other ones that I've used. So, um, yeah. So anyway, set that aside. I ended up, um, Joe is a huge fan of, um, of what's that show called? Adventure Time. He's a huge fan of Adventure Time. So the timing was right that Diamond Art Club re-released, um, Where the Fun Never Ends, right when I was kind of like, when I realized this past weekend that I was working on that kit for, for him and I shouldn't have been, or, you know, I, I was misinterpreted the ownership. So I went and picked up that for him. That's much more manageable. It's a lot smaller than a 100 by 120. So I should easily be able to get that done this fall or over the summer um, and crank through that. So that's the plan. So, oh my goodness, I've just been really sloppy with these drills so far today. Um, so that's one reason why you see what you see here, Soul of the Rose. I didn't do an unboxing of it. I didn't do a kitting up because I just was like, honestly, you know, having to kit down that whole giant canvas and like set it aside, knowing that I had already put so many hours into it. And I'm not the type of person that wants to leave, like wants to have a bunch of starts. Like I don't want to have... 15 canvases sitting in my closet all that have like a couple sections of drills on them. I am a kind of a completionist, so I'm going to work on something until it's done. Um, so my one concession was I'll have this big giant custom that I pull out from time to time that is taxing. It takes a lot of energy every time I do a section of that because of the confetti. And then I'll have something else that is maybe a little bit more color blocking or just like a diamond art club kit or something that I know I can work through relatively quickly and I'll switch back and forth. And then um, my goal you know, or what I was intending on doing in June was having that custom out, but then my other canvas canvas or can, you know, would be the uh, summers with summer with the masters kit, an old masters that I had selected. So that was my plan was do old masters over the summer and your custom dirt bike. And so now that that was gone and I was finished with Midnight Laundromat, I kind of had a choice to make. Either I don't do any diamond painting until June, which wasn't going to happen, <laughs> um, or I pick maybe pick an old masters or start working on my old masters because the summer with the masters event with uh, Diamonds and Washi and Tiny Worlds of Wonder, you don't have to have a new start. It can be something that you've already been working on. So I was like, perfect. I'll get a two-week head start into... Um, into the old masters or the summer with the masters event and that'll be that and maybe I can even do two now that that custom's gone I can work on two different canvases and you know ideally get them um, get them both done in the two months of the event it runs from June 1st to July 31st so um, so yeah that was my plan but the canvas that I selected for Summer with the Masters was that Red Gate of Hongo, the one that I did the kitting up of. It's all kitted up and ready to go. Um, my only thing is, is um, I selected to have that canvas from Uniquely Yours Down Under come with AB drills. And on their site, it says it'll be two to six ABs depending on the canvas, but they don't really tell you, and most companies don't. They're not going to say, oh, here's the colors of ABs and how many and where they're going to go and all that stuff. It's kind of just you leave it up to how it's been charted and then you go from there. But traditionally, your ABs are used for kind of highlighting, um, that type of thing. Especially, I would I would have assumed um, with an old masters because there isn't a lot of like 
bling and stuff like you know midnight laundromat compared to starry night you know <laughs> um it it can be a little bit more i would assume it would be a little bit more subdued and really just used as an accent but anyway um ended up getting that kit in love the canvas love the the drill quality looks fine from what i did kitting up um super excited to work on it but they did all of the b5200 as AB. That was one of their AB colors. And that kit is, um, if I can remember, I'll insert a photo of it. That kit, or just take a look at the kitting up and the unboxing that I did, um, that kit is almost, I'd say 50%, if not more, um, white because it's in a snow background and there's snow all over the, the gate and or the kind of, yeah, the, the structure there. There's snow in the background, foreground, it's everywhere. And so they sent me this massive giant bag of ABs, like the biggest drill bag I've seen of a single color and let alone it being ABs. And so I was like, all right, I can either just, just do it, you know, just keep my mouth shut and do it or not keep my mouth shut, but just like, you know, trust the process, trust that they, um, they charted and, and selected those colors specifically, you know, intentionally, or I can raise my hand and be like, hey, uh, this seems a little excessive, you know, is there anything you can do for me? So uh, Uniquely Yours Down Under did respond, and um, I sent them like a picture of the bag, and they're like, okay, well, because um, I told them in the email, and I'm trying to be as like, just go with the flow as much as possible, because at the end of the day, I ordered a kit that said it had two to six ABs, they don't have to tell me where those are going to go or how much of them. And they don't have to disclose if they're charting that by hand and if that decision was intentional or the computer just does it or the manufacturer makes the decision. They, they're they not responsible for any of that. You know, I purchased that kit based on the information they provided. And that's kind of, that's the deal, you know. So, um, but they did respond saying, um, well, we can either send you... Um, you know, you can just roll with it if you want, or we can send you out the regular B5200s that aren't AB. Um, and if you're unsure of what I'm talking about, um, AB are um, a specialty drill that has like an extra iridescent kind of film or coating on the top of it. Um, it almost looks like someone laid like really shiny saran wrap over everything, but it has this like color changing effect to it. And it almost kind of gives it almost like a disco ball kind of effect as well. It's really great to highlight and accentuate colors around it and just add more kind of like, uh, it creates a pop of like a uh, brighter color and it draws your eye to it. Um, so you'll usually see it on eyes or in hair or like areas where you want to add a little bit of embellishment. But like I said, with this kit, pretty much the entire background and foreground are just covered in it. So I think it would be quite blinding and pretty overpowering. And it would maybe even be hard to decipher what the image actually is. So um, so they were like, yeah, you either we, you can either just roll with it or we're happy to send you regular ABs. So I was like, perfect. If you could do that, that would be awesome. And um, they said, just let me, let us know how much you need. And so I wrote them back in on the, on the bag of ABs, it has the weight and it's like 130 something grams of ABs. So in my head, I was like, okay, I probably want maybe at the most a 10 to one ratio. So for every 10 regular drills, I have one AB and then I can just kind of mix them up and let them be haphazard as the snow. Um, so I just divided that by 10 and sent them that weight. And they responded and said, oh, we, we typically work off of the actual number of drills. So I had to find uh, an article online from a company that I think does um, cross-stitch conversions. And so most people that do cross-stitch conversions over to diamond painting have to figure out how many drills they need based on the, the square size and all that stuff. So I found that site did the best I could to do that conversion myself and then send them over the number, which was a big number. It's like, I was like, okay, great. Well, I'll need 17,400 and something drills, you know, because I have, um, because I basically need 90% of the amount of ABs I had to do that 10 to one, if that makes sense. So it was a lot. And I know that's a big ask, um, especially once again, because they're kind of doing me a solid, you know, I, 
I bought what I bought, They and they lived up to their end of the deal. They sent me a canvas with two to six ABs square drill. So that that's kind of that should be the end of the transaction. So they're definitely going above and beyond by willing to offer that to me. Um, but I sent that response email with the amount, I think that was a week ago, maybe a little over a week ago. And it's been a little bit radio silent. So I don't know if I scared them with requesting that much, or maybe they got the feeling that I was trying to like, take advantage of the situation. I don't know. But at the end of the day, I'm, I don't want to be pushy either. So I sent one follow up email just saying, hey, um, I just wanted to see if um, this is so, still something you can do for me. I was hoping to be able to start this kit for Summer with the Masters. And that was the kit that I, I bought that kit from them specifically for that event. And so I don't think it's going to happen. I, I haven't gotten any, at, at least not that I, I have, I checked, I think this morning and I didn't get any feedback, but like I said, I don't want to be pushy. I'm a big kid. If I really want it, I will just hop on to, I think it's like Diamond Drills USA or something like that. And I'm just going to order them and I'll just start that kit late. Um, I guess for me, I, I don't know. I, I guess I just, if there was any sort of, um, hesitation on on the company's end of doing that favor for me and if if they felt like they were overextending themselves to to do that for me i i guess i would just have a, wished that that would have just been the message up front like sorry charlie you ordered what you ordered um here's some suggested sites or you know they don't even have to do that but you know here's where i would suggest getting those regular drills or you can even order them from me um you know purchase them. And I think on their site, they even have um, a section for stock drills. And gosh, I wish I would have, I wish, almost wish they would have said, yeah, uh, well, you know what? You, we sent the ABs based on that kit. And if you want to make any alterations, just like if I wanted to add ABs to a kit that didn't have them, um, I could just go order them. You know, I would have just hopped on the site and ordered them as quickly as possible. That way I could have started that kit on June 1st. But I doubt that they're going to be able to order, fulfill, and ship and deliver those by next week. So I think uh, I think I'm going to give it maybe a couple of more days um, because you know I can work on that kit any time in the next two months to still be you know included in the event. And even if they don't come in time for that, I've got some other I've got a kit right now that I'm working on that's an old master. So eh, you know I'm just kind of I think I I would rather. I appreciate people trying to go above and beyond, but a lot of people have other stuff going on in their lives and their business just isn't, doesn't have the support team in place to be dealing with people like me that need like little onesie, twosie, you know, specialty shipments and this and that. So I would almost rather, a, you know, a company acknowledge that and be honest about that and, and have that transparency. And it's not dishonest, it's more of, it's okay to, it, it would have been okay for me at least to say no, like go fly a kite, Anthony. Um, you got the kit that you got with in you and that's what you got. So I, I don't know. I just feel like oh, now I'm kind of like, there's this kit that's all kitted up and I was super excited to work on it for Summer with the Masters and I don't think it's going to happen at least not right away. So a little bit bummed there, but it's okay. You know, um, I have no ill will or anything like that to any sort of company um, they treated me more than fairly and did go above and beyond and were communicative to me to let me know, you know, this is how they, this is how the warehouse does it, or this is how it's been charted and, but we can make alterations should you raise a stink, <laughs> um, essentially. Um, so I'm going to get my drills one way or another. I'll just go order them. And they, they have another kit from that same, um, same artist. I forget his name. Um, and I don't want to miss say it. I'm going to put it in the title card and I'm going to try it. Um, is it Hiro Ashi? Oh, no, 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 not going to try it. So anyway, I'll put it up in the title card, what the title of it is, but you'll see it in an unboxing and a kidding up. So, um, go over and watch those videos for more info, but he, there's another canvas. It's called like junk ships in something Bay and it is gorgeous. So, I'm gonna th probably gonna order that um, once I finish another kit, kind of one in, one out. Um, but I'm gonna get it with no ABs. I'm gonna, it's an old masters. I'm not gonna risk it, you know, I want it to look fairly similar to kind of the actual rendering. 
and avoid too much embellishment. So I'm gonna get it without any ABs and give it another shot with uh, Uniquely Yours Down Under. So, um, so that's what's been going on with that. Um, so that brings us to this canvas and we'll kind of wrap it up with this. Um, so there I was, I didn't have the Red Gate of Hongo because um, I don't have the right drill or the drills I would like, let's say that. Um, I don't have the drills that I want, um, but I did get the drills that I was promised. Um, and I didn't have that custom canvas, uh, because that still had a sour taste in my mouth because now I'm going to look at that dirt bike with disdain. So that's put away. Red Gate of Hongo's put away. I didn't have anything to work on and I didn't want to start a kit and then have to put it away in June in favor of potentially waiting for my uniquely yours down under kit. So I was like, I'm going to pick something that is an old masters that I have that I can transition into the event. And then if I get my drills, either by me purchasing them or by um, uniquely yours down under sending them, then I can work on them both and ideally get them both done and they'll both still qualify and I'll have two really awesome kits. So I wanted to paint the night that I, <laughs> that I was fussing about this or, you know, you know, being anxious, unnecessarily anxious about this. And so I just went in the closet and I was like, you, over there, um, soul of the rose, come over here. I need you. And I wasn't in the mood to film. I wasn't in the mood to, you know, really do any sort of announcement that I'm starting a new kit or anything like that. I just cracked this thing open. I kitted it up pretty freaking quickly. And I, I did like a par part of a section that night. And that's kind of where we're at. So I've been working on it all this week. And, um, and now we're... I've got a full vertical section. I'll insert a photo of my current progress. Um, um, after we're done this evening, um, as I'm editing. So I've got a, this whole section here vertical wise, and now here's another vertical section going up this way. And so I've got this. So I'd say I'm like about a fourth of the way done, a fifth of the way done. Um, and I'm moving through it pretty quickly. There's a pretty decent amount of color blocking here. Um, and so it's moving fast. Drills are wonderful, minimal gapping, but still some forgiveness and placement, which I always appreciate. Um, this is my first Distracted by Diamonds canvas, and I want them all. I want the other John William Waterhouse images um, or uh, paintings that they carry there. Um, they've got a bunch of beautiful canvases. I think I have about four now that I've collected from them that are waiting to be worked on. This is my first one, and I'm so glad that I took everyone else's reviews and information, used that in my decision making and just kind of uh, went for it because the quality is pretty amazing. I It's been a joy, an absolute joy to work on. It's one of those canvases that every time I complete a section and it just kind of reveals that next piece of the image, I'm like, oh, wow, like it just, it's so exciting to see it to come together and take a step back and kind of look at it compared to the, um, to the original artwork and just and see that detail it's just shocking how good of a rendering this is so anyway that's all I have so now that we're done um, chatting I'm gonna move the camera that way you can see the boy da -da -da, da -da 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 -da. Apollo say hi baby hi Apollo this is this is him this is his life and I told you in a in a, my I think one of my first videos, maybe my second, that in a previous life I did a lot of skincare reviews, and my I was I guess I collected skincare, and so I guess I'll give you a little. So that is my little skincare closet shelving unit, and then I've got a secondary one over there, just those top few um, sections. So slowly working through it. Um, I don't really review it anymore. <laughs> um, and I do a lot of giving it away to friends and family, um, so I don't miss any expiration dates. But luckily, none of that stuff expires for at least another year to three or four years, depending on the product. So it looks like a lot, and it looks like it, it would go to waste. And if things do get close to their expiration date, and I don't have anyone to give it to that I know, um, I am no stranger to bagging stuff up and running it over to the women's shelter because it's all unopened. It's all brand new. So 
Anyway, that's that. Um, let me know if you have any questions or comments either about Soul of the Rose, my time with Apollo thus far, working, working with the Husky Puppy, um, anything, anything at all. And don't forget, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, share this channel with your friends, family, coworkers, anyone that you think might take some value out of these little chats and conversations. I love keeping you company. It's my favorite thing to do when I'm diamond painting is to throw on a whip and chat from uh, Diamonds and Washi or um, Rachel Ray. She's been doing like the a floss tube and I don't know anything about cross stitch, but I'm learning about cross stitch just through her lives and her whip and chats. So I might pick it up and I might be able to pick it up and be like, I know the word skein and I know um, this brand of floss because I just sit and watch whip and chats while I diamond paint. So anyway, thanks again for watching. Have an excellent rest of your week. You may see me pop in again with a potential surprise unboxing and maybe even a uh, trail and chat. I teased that I might want to do a hiking trail with Apollo and just do kind of a chat while I'm hiking. Um, so I'm calling them a, a trail in progress or a tip in chat. So be on the lookout for a tip in chat potentially this weekend. Otherwise, um, we'll see you here soon with more content. Thank you so much again for watching. And as always, happy placing. Bye, bye, bye.